Over the last few weeks, I've been working on quite a number of SLS, self-leveling suspension systems, shooting a number of videos, doing a bunch of repairs, and I've been doing quite a bit of work with this leveling valve. I've actually overhauled five of them recently to try to get in there and find out all the different types of problems that you can have with these, and during the whole process, you know, I've been messing around with this little part here. This is the rod, the adjusting rod for the leveling valve. And when you first look at this rod, you think, oh, that's pretty simple. You know, as long as it's not too rusty and I can turn the shafts, or if the balls aren't like falling out of the sockets, I should be okay. Well, not necessarily so. The more I've been playing around with this, the more I've been learning about it, particularly about its design and how it's supposed to properly function. I've also come up with a couple of really unique tools which will help you get this rod off and adjust it while you're on the ground under the car. Watch here as I'm struggling, even using some four and a half inch ramps, I'm still hitting my, almost hitting my chest here on the fuel tank as I'm under the car. So let me show you this rod up close and I can explain a little bit more about what I'm talking about. I'm holding a new OE adjusting rod. You can see there's the Mercedes star stamped into the part right there. And then there's an R there and an L there. That designates right-hand thread and this designates left-hand thread. So there's two different types of threads. I go over all that in my video on adjusting the self-leveling valve. That's not the purpose of this video as I just want to explain the difference between a brand new and a partially worn out adjusting rod. It has to do with this ball socket right here. Now if you've pulled one of these used ones off, you may go ahead and just take the end and pull on it like that and say, well, I don't feel a lot of slop but you may notice that the end flips back and forth. Now watch what happens when I try to bend this rod in. See that? Look at that. It springs right back to neutral position. The same way here. Say if I push up on this, it springs back. If I push down on it, it springs back right into a very stiff neutral position. You can feel this. It's tight in there, but because of the the rubber in there, it's keeping it stiff and it's keeping it perfectly 90 degrees from this ball end. Now this is really critical when you go to install it because when you go through the adjustment process, you want to adjust the rod length so it just easily slides into the hole. Now if you have a partially worn out rod and it's very sloppy, look at this. You can actually push the threaded end of the rod into the hole there at quite an angle. And you might think you have the rod adjusted properly, but you don't. When you go to tighten the nut down, this will push this down and it will change the distance considerably, particularly if you have worn balls on both ends of these adjusting rods. So if you're looking for a precise, and I'm talking about precise adjustment of your leveling valve, you need to have these threaded ends spring back to the neutral position. So when you go to adjust it and slide it into the hole, you know that it's set up perfectly. Now I want to show you how the custom tool set I designed to adjust this rod can help you when you're adjusting the ride height on your own Mercedes-Benz. Now keep in mind you don't really need a tool for adjusting the rod. Let me explain. Because of the right and left hand thread, once you loosen up the locking nuts here, you can just twist that center nut and if you turn it this way, notice it's lengthening the rod and if I turn it this way, Notice it's shortening the rod, so that's easy. As long as your threads aren't all rusty, you can just adjust the length of the rod easily by hand by turning that center nut in and out. The problem comes when you go to tighten down these locking nuts. Now, if you were to just grab a hold of that locking nut with a 10 millimeter wrench and start trying to tighten it like that, what happens is because this end is already connected to the, the leveling arm or the arm coming out of the side of the leveling valve. When you go to twist this nut here to lock it down on the ball end, you can snap the ball right out of the socket here and that ruins the rod. So what I've done is I've created a second tool which will allow you to come in and get a hold of the flat spots on each one of these ball socket ends. Now, once again, this is just a 10 millimeter. So you would think, oh, I can get on there with just a 10 millimeter combination wrench. The problem is you don't have a lot of room in there. You have the differential here. You have the leveling valve here. So to eliminate frustration, I created this bent wrench like you see here. 
and that reaches up in there and goes on that flat spot and then I put a bolt coming through the box end to allow you to torque on that but you hold that tight while you use this short wrench to go up in behind the differential and then you can tighten the locking nut. It sounds like it's not that bad but let me tell you once again when you're doing this on the ground under the car with the engine running it can be really frustrating to get these locking nuts loose and retightened without damaging the rod. Now the other thing I use this tool for is getting on the back side here and holding that while taking the locking nut off. But guess what? I ordered in one of these new rods here and look at that. My 10 millimeter wrench doesn't work. Now on the old rods, the 10 millimeter wrench works just fine. Watch here as I get in behind the leveling valve arm and get a hold of this with a 10 millimeter and then I can loosen the lock nut up. So now what I've got to do is I've got to include a third wrench in my kit. I have no idea uh, who's going to have one of these newer style adjusting rods or who's going to have the old original style with a square nut. So the 8 millimeter has been ground to a very thin head which will allow you now to come in and get on this flat area so that you can use a 10 millimeter to loosen and tighten the locking nut. And always replace your nuts with new locking nuts after completing the adjustment on your leveling valve. If you want more information on how to adjust a leveling valve that's available on my website, it also comes with my kit for resealing or overhauling one of these leveling valves. So I'll just put some links in the show more part of this description that'll take you to those resources on my website.